ESA and NASA's return to the moon as part of the Artemis program is an important step closer to launch after tests at the Kennedy Space Center in the United States. There's a good reason this crawler transporter has a slow cruising speed of just over one kilometer per hour. NASA's heavy launch vehicle, the SLS, is almost 100 meters high and weighs 5,000 tons. A successful wet dress rehearsal involved loading the SLS with propellants and a practice countdown to within seconds of liftoff. Artemis 1 is now cleared for a future launch, which will involve an expanded orbit of its Orion capsule around the Moon. After a second crewed mission around the Moon called Artemis 2, astronauts will finally return to the lunar surface after a long absence. The future of space exploration is incredibly exciting. Not only are we working every day on board the International Space Station, but we're also preparing to send humans back to the moon for the first time since Apollo 17 in December 1972. ESA's contribution to Artemis 1 is the European Service Module, or ESM. This four-meter-long cylindrical spacecraft behind the Orion capsule has four solar arrays, three types of engines for maneuverability, and avionics with over 11 kilometers of cables that send commands and receive information from sensors. And it's a crucial part of the mission. The European Service Module provides the power, the electrical power, the propulsion for the Orion capsule, but also it will provide when there are astronauts aboard the oxygen and the water as well. So it's really the life support, the power and propulsion for our uh, lunar explorers. ESA has already delivered their second service module to power astronauts around the moon for Artemis II, with Artemis III under construction. The mission will return astronauts to the lunar surface. ESA is also playing a major role in building the Gateway Space Station, a permanent spaceport around the moon, as well as providing habitation and refueling modules and enhanced lunar communications. The Gateway will be a thousand times further out in space than the space station and will act as a long-term base for astronauts to visit the lunar surface for science and exploration. The surface of the Moon has about the same area as Africa and uh, we only visited the Moon six times in the 1960s and 1970s. So if you think about landing in six different spots in Africa, you quickly realize that there's so much more left to learn and understand about how the moon formed and how it's evolved over the last four and a half billion years. Three ESA astronauts will fly on missions on Orion to the Lunar Gateway. We don't know who they will be yet, but what's clear is that a new era of lunar discovery awaits that will also lay down important groundwork for future missions to Mars.